Welcome to another session from the old wise asylum. Ooh. We've triggered the fruit bats. Oh, I don't know whether you've noticed, but so the last few videos, all the good comments have been removed. Of course, it's not by me, it's by the 77 Brigade and Associated Talmud Shaggers. And uh, they've had these fruit cakes up, putting all sorts of nonsense up. So, mods, be vigilant tonight. Any nonsense, just get rid. Oh, don't fuck about. We're not here to debate tonight. We're still teaching. So be a good pupil or get out. It's as simple as that. We're not interested in debating with fruitcakes. Shut up and listen or go away. And if you can't go away nicely, then the mods will slot you. It's as simple as that. So let that be a warning to any potential fruit bats who have come to join the wise asylum. Chalker is the next one on the left, round the corner. Not the wires are sound. So there we go. That's that out of the way. Um, what's going on? There's some shenanigans being mentioned to this week about what that image uh, of Kate is all about. Now, you know, I don't believe it's fake. I don't believe it's doctored. I think it's just a true image. Uh, you can get abnormalities in images at times, and I don't think for a second it's photoshopped. As I said, I think the uh, ritual in that and the symbolism they're giving you is the fact that she didn't have a wedding ring on or her engagement ring on. No. Things, and of course, we're, we have no idea whether this is correct, but some of the stuff that's been banded about is that, obviously, it looks like baldy boy Billy is a shagger. So shagger Bill, we'll call him from now on, I think. And... Uh, yeah, it looks like uh, she were happy about that, a bit like Diana. And she thought, well, I'll have a bit of Kingston. Bang Kingston, got up off, he killed Kingston. Now, some are saying that in a fit of rage, Shaggy Bill has knocked her off. Others are saying they've got her in a coma. I don't know. I have no idea. But there's definitely something going on. And I don't believe for a second that that picture were photoshopped. So, who's come out and said, apologise for it? Yeah, or they, they just went, I think they're just swinging you to see if you'll suck into the garbage. So, I don't think it's AI, and I certainly don't think it's photoshopped. I think that was Kate telling us someone, if she's still alive, and not in a coma. Who knows? We can expect any from these fruit bats, because murder is their game. And, uh, you know, you're risking all. The closer you get to these families in relation to getting knocked off, if you say the wrong thing, if they don't like you. And if they feel like you, you're in good order, they might want to eat you, according to David. So who knows these things, but I'm not having it that it's photoshopped. I think there's another game going on there, and they're just seeing how many fruit bats believe that it's photoshopped. So I'd say, again, I think the, the ritual there and the symbolism is no rings. No rings. So, anyway, we'll have to wait and see. I've got a little present for you from Ireland, for Ireland tonight. Um, I'm going through some uh, some interesting data in relation to some of these uh, fruit bat elite families that uh, actually, they, their speciality is making poison piss that everybody drinks. Um, so, you know, it might be worth looking at this. I've put it up as a, um, a document in the website, so... But obviously I want to show off and I'll put it up as we tune on, just so you can get the gist of what it is. But of course you'll have the PDF to go to after if you want to take it a bit more serious and, and dig into actually what it's saying. But uh, it's important stuff this because, you know, you're out there drinking the poison piss and you're funding them to ultimately destroy you. Same with all these families. They all have specific corporate interests that they make the money on. And of course, we're, or you're giving it to them. And then the present they give back to you is death. By whatever means they can give you. And again, this is down to the fact that you're in the garden, you're not working and functioning correctly, so you're not seeing things correctly. And of course, we're going to expand on what I've started last week 
in relation to, and tonight says, how do you move out of the garden and back into Genesis 1? Um, because we're dealing with the first three chakras, the root, the sacral, the solar plexus. Each has a religion afforded to it. Each has you fixed to the cube. Uh, I hope you've understood that. Of course, the fruit bats are out in force. Uh, yeah, still, we still will. And so there's some, some strange things happened this week. Uh, somebody tried to act me Twitter while I was actually on it. So we've stirred the pot somewhat. And some might say, well, how the fuck come you can do this? How do you say this? Well, I'll tell you why. Because I weren't stupid enough to join our secret society and take an oath to keep my mouth shut. That's why. I can choose to tell you what I know. You don't have to believe it. You don't have to accept it. It doesn't matter. I'm not forcing myself upon you. I'm saying to you, this is what I have experienced in my life. And I'm happy to share it with you. Because if you do understand it, and you do try to implement it, however little you can into your life, you will improve things for yourself, no end. And you'll be less fooled by the shitbags and the Talmud chuggers. You're not going to get fooled by them. It's as simple as that. So, with that in mind, I just want to kick off with this particular image, because this is where, this is the point at which um, the cube system was handed to those who claim to be Jewish, but are certainly not. They're nothing to do with the Torah. These are Talmudists. These are people of the Zohar, which is the stolen data from the Druids. Now, we're just dealing with the, the garden, the first three chakras here, guarded by the sacred feminine. You won't get out. Now, in those three garden, uh, the, those three uh, twisted ideologies and mindsets, you need a male god because, of course, an unruly shitbag needs daddy, doesn't it? Mummy can't cope and deal with unruly shitbags. She can sort you out and punish you, and she does. But this garden, overall, has got male uh, guard dogs in it, or ex-bullies, as they call them, to keep you in check. But ultimately, it's mummy that's dealing out the, the, uh, the coma. Until you get it right. Because when you get it right, and you balance that masculine and feminine energy within yourself, you are not an unruly child anymore. A mummy is happy to be with you. And she's then happy to pass you beyond the three chakras. And then you can express the real art energies and raise yourself up to the site in the fifth, as I've said, symbolised in the old school by the blue people. We've got fruit bats on about that as well. So somebody actually suggested that the keyboard at the back, being black and white, is a sign that I'm actually a mason. Well, I can assure you, I am not part of any secret society that belongs down on the old earth. I can assure you of that. So fruit bats united everywhere, triggered because they haven't got a clue what they're talking about. Okay, so there we go. Anyway, so we'll kick it off again just to remind. And that is, um, oh, oh, there we go. So when they managed to get the Federal Reserve into America, they managed to persuade the British government that don't surrender in 1915, which is exactly what we were going to do, that they were going to bring in the Yanks. And this is the war cabinet, by the way, that's doing all this. Now, the war cabinet was made up of non-elected tosspots, Tied to the, uh, the round table group of, which is Royal Institute of International Affairs, the CFR, Bilderberg Group, Club of Rome, which is your climate madness. Um, yeah, and these fruit bat UN shitbags as well. So the war cabinet is the game at the back end of this game that's persuading the uh, British government of the day not to surrender because they were going to kill a load of Yanks on a ship all the Lithuania and pull in the might of the new British military imperial force that had been shifted over to the United States. And in so doing, the British government had to pledge full allegiance 
to the formation and protection of the coming Israel. All right? That's what we're doing. And at that, that point, once it was agreed, then the New World Order was pledged to not the Jews, not the Torah Jews, to the fruit bats, the Talmud Chaggers, all right, who pretend to be Jews. And this sort of Arthur Greenwood of the British War Cabinet sends a message of assurance here, writing of wrongs. Now, what wrongs have been done? Because the, the wrongs, if I remember, weren't carried out until from 1940 to 1945, if you believe the spin. Of course, we all know that the Second World War was specifically about demolishing architecture. Now, we're going to get into that next week, because obviously, after today, we hopefully have gone through enough data to show you the importance of why you need to move out of the garden, off the cube, and pull your three chakras back into balance. Because what's very important is once you pass through the heart, then it's all about the eye. And of course, you've got all the fruit bats everywhere. They've got millions of ideas of what the eye's all about, but of course, they haven't got a clue. And the high level secret society folk that do know have pledged not to tell you. This is how the fruit bats keep this data in check. All right, so that's how it works. Um, so there's a cheat sheet in all this, you know, so the, the, the way that Christianity was formed in the West was it was a system set up that if you showed uh, that you were really moving forward as a spiritual being and you were moving in sync with spiritual law at each level, then the system itself would open up to you. That was the Aryan system we had in Western Christendom. Um, and then, of course, you would be a valid uh, accomplice in the spiritual side of, of life on this plane. Now, the cheat sheet is, of course, these fruit bats that call themselves Jews but are not. They stole this data from the Druids. Now, we know that the Druids were all, the system itself was all passed down as oral. It had to be remembered and it was like a 30 year uh, initiation uh, rite. But ultimately, we don't actually know that if in the centre of it, they didn't have to actually have it written down. Now, if they didn't have it written down, then the only way that these fruit bats could have actually got this data was through torture. So there's what were going on when the Romans were over here annihilating the Druids, who up until that point had educated the entire British Empire elite children. So we have to take it in, in that way. So they, they, they have a cheat sheet. And the cheat sheet in and of itself is so that they don't have to balance themselves at the three chakras. And they can jump directly to how to utilise the eye. Now, of course, their eye, as we all know, is pure evil. And it's move to manifest its will through the use of the third eye or the pineal gland is pure evil, it's sick, it's disgusting. And of course, it's been going on for a very long time. We're talking since antediluvian times. And so in that time, if you understand how the occult side of, of the world works, then of course, really intense emotions and experiences create uh, elementals in the unseen. So it's like, it's sort of a, a non-physical entity, but it's based entirely on these extreme emotional uh, events and feelings that are, are, are created by us down here. War, all that goes with it, all the, the slavery, the rapes, all that goes on, the torture, creates these elementals. Now, the black magicians utilise these elementals to their own ends. You've also got the case of if you do not perform correctly down here and you actually everything you've done is quite evil, then you're going to stay at a very low level when you do pass. And again, you'll be forced into being able to be used by these uh, evil forces that control that level that then connect with black magicians in the earthly plane. And of course, the black magicians believe that they're in control, but of course they're not. 
you know, this new world order and this power grid that they're setting up is, as the beneficiaries, it's, it's not an earthly uh, gig. It's entirely um, to the benefit of these uh, dark forces that have been created down here by us. Um, and of course, then they've got this power to actually manipulate people to the cause. So what's actually happening when you join the secret society is you've given up a big part of yourself and you've given responsibility for that to others. They're going to use you. But of course, they do need oaths. They have to oath you to secrecy so that you can't speak of what you know. Now, your low degree masons don't know anything anyway. This is, again, above the third degree when you're into the occult rights. They know and they keep quiet. So the fruit bats that are getting excited are getting excited because what I've been giving you in this last three live streams is very important. But only if you grasp it and only if you attempt to put it into practice. It's not going to help you just to know it. You know, it's, it, it's important that you understand that. You know, this data is there, but it's what you do with it. It's a tool if you use it correctly. And you will benefit from it. Now, back in the 90s, when I was studying the Buddhist doctrines, I was studying the, what we, the Sanskrit doctrines. And at the same time, I was studying theosophy. Because I wanted to get it direct from the sources, so the, doc, the Buddhist doctrine and the Sanskrit doctrines, but I also wanted to see how theosophy was manipulating that data. Now, in, in, in most cases... Early on, the theosophists were actually doing a good job because they were reforming a lot of this Eastern data and giving it to us in a way that the Western mind could grasp. But of course, the, in came the dark-eyed people, you know, and uh, pretty much took it over. And so you could see that as theosophy progressed, that the whole game was being formed to serve the dark eye, the evil eye. The eye that's working or the pineal gland manifesting for the ungraded, unspiritual characters both here on earth and of course the ones just outside this place and this form uh, that have been held in by the shells if you understand the Kabbalah uh, but of course you're now being released in these times that we're in today. Uh, because you know as you're building this new man in the sort of astrological game we're now building... We've built the feet in Pisces. We're now coming up to building the ankles and the calves. This shit has to go. Otherwise, it's just going to build another example of what we had antediluvian times, if you may. You know, or, or maybe uh, even after that. Uh, I've done a piece, actually, in the website, the Essenes. I'll put that up after. Just gives you a, a sort of insight into the battle between the two sides uh, pre -anti uh, for antediluvian and post-antediluvian. It's an interesting read. Uh, just it just gives you an idea and, and sort of touches on a lot of historical uh, concepts that we're aware of in which these battles have, have been going on forever. But next week we're going to move into the eye and, and what it's important and how they've achieved this through the various secret societies doing battle against each other. To, and it is all about this manifesting as it is an in sync with spiritual law as an ordained by the Heavenly Father, you might say, as opposed to this fruit bat bunch who have bypassed the spiritual side of it and have just achieved the data that they can actually then copy and use and certain ones of them have been wise enough or clairvoyant enough to actually achieve that ability to use the third eye to manifest this puke. And of course, Nostradamus was one of those. And it's important that people recognise who Nostradamus worked for. He worked for Catherine de' Medici. Now, to all intents and purposes, the Medici disappeared. It's absolute garbage. When you actually get into the game, nearly every single aristocrat in the British Isles, especially Scotland and into Ireland, are all related to Maria de' Medici. So the Medici just went underground and used the women folk to attach themselves to the Aryan race, basically, and subvert it by, ex ex not necessarily by um, 
forging it through their husband, but by making sure their offspring were programmed to this dark evil eye game, which has created and made this manifestation so powerful today of this uh, evil eye gig. This is why it's on all their... Uh, and all the symbolism, you know, the pyramids, etc., etc. So it's really important. But first, we need to really get to grips with the first three chakras. Because until you do, you're still stuck. You're going to be stuck on the cube. Uh, and you're going to be run by this uh, bunch of fruit bats. You're not going to raise your frequencies enough to move outside and above the garden. And, and then be able to actually become a conduit for the, the spiritual side of what is man. So remember that New World Order pledged to them. That's the point at which the West had been taken over by the cube, the masters of the cube. And it, it basically comes down to the fact that we went to war. Because as, as disgusting as it might be, and we don't want to see it, you know, when war declared against Germany in World War One, everybody on these islands was celebrating. They thought it was a great idea. So obviously by that time, after, you might say, the Napoleonic Wars, through the 1800s of the mills and the mines and all the crap, they'd really sort of subdued the Western mind to the point that they were all excited to go and kill out our brother Germans. And, and then vice versa. The Russians were involved in it, the French, the Belgians, the Dutch. They were all involved. They'd been subdued to such a point by this dark eye group, um that it, 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 it just took off from there. So obviously at that point then, we've fallen to a point of spiritual ignorance that they would pledge then to them. And Vatican II is the point at which it was sealed in the Western Christendom. It was sealed, done deal. We had an opportunity, because Pope Pius X was a good man, and he basically told the Zionists to piss off. He wouldn't bless the game. And then all the rest of the popes after that were tossers. We did get a chance of one, but he only managed 33 days. And then you can get an idea into that if you watch Godfather 3. Because that's exactly what we're going on. But at Vatican II, and Fatima obviously gave us an insight into, well, if you don't get this right by 1960, then there's nothing we can do. It, it's sealed. This, this gig is sealed that Western Christendom has been completely taken over by the cube. The cube, cube masters. Um, so I just wanted to get that fixed in your mind. It's important. Uh, and it's all based on the fact that we're all living within the low frequencies and the negative frequencies of the first three chakras. Um, now this is just one to keep your eyes out for because we're approaching the 22nd of March. Now today is the first ember day as we travel towards the spring equinox. Before the spring equinox there's three ember days. And there are days in which you, if you work with it, um, you can sort of uh, focus to relaxing your mind, relaxing everything that's going on in your world, so that when you get to this crossing, you can pick up the frequencies that are going to come through at every equinox and every solstice. So the ember days are there for you to relax and take it on board, become aware of nature's cycles, and so you can pick up the best of the energies you can as we cross through the equinox but then of course they always play a game on the 22nd to try and screw that up on the 22nd of March and here we've got just an idea just to give you is Westminster track 2018 March 22nd Brussels terror attack 2016 March to 22nd 2021 10 people died at supermarket in Colorado March the 22nd and March the 22nd is Skull and Bones Day well this is the order of death the Skull and Bones Founded in 1832 by the grandfather of Charles Taze Russell. Charles Taze Russell, of course, was the guy who set up the Jehovah's Witnesses. The Russells are very, very important in on the British Isles and, of course, across America. Um, they were drug runners in the opium days, uh, running into China. Uh, with the Keswicks uh, up here in Keswick, they were another family that were very involved with this. Uh, we don't have to get into that, but... Skull and Bones, you've got George H. Bush, George W. Bush, and of course the, the player today who's throwing his shit around, John Kerry. All members of this Skull and Bones. Now there is a couple of videos, I don't know whether they're still out there, of, I forget her name, the daughter of one, uh, of a member of Skull and Bones who actually 
presents you the books that only the Skull and Bones get members get, and she goes through who was members. Very interesting if you're into that kind of stuff. In fact, I may try and look it up and uh, maybe put it uh, on the YouTube channel so you can have a good look. But very important that you can understand just the power of this, this secret society at Yale. They start, um, Prescott Bush, who's George H. Bush's father, George W. Bush's grandfather, he actually uh, stole Geronimo's skull because, of course, the occult order and they know how to play with skulls. Uh, I think he'd been dead a bit too long for him to actually achieve what it were they were trying to achieve. Uh, at least I hope that's the case. But I think that's exactly the case. He'd been dead too long for Johnny Moore before Prescott Bush dug it up and put it in the tomb or the crypt at the Skull and Bones headquarters at Yale. So, very interesting if you don't know much about the Skull and Bones. Um, well worth a look because it is the order of death. It's a German chapter of the lodges uh, that they set up in Yale to oversee the Ivy Leagues. So Alpha Pi, Phi and all these orders that they've got in all the other universities that make up the Ivy League is connected to this particular order. Um, so that's that. Now let's have a look who's in and then we'll crack on. First we'll have a look. I'll just give you an insight to Ireland's elites that I pulled together for you this week. Because you're all you're all supping the poison piss. You're giving them the energy they need to actually screw you to the floor. If we can start to think of it in these terms, you can remove the power just by stop consuming the bollocks. It's really that simple. You know, you know me, simplicity. I'm always looking for simplicity because the truth of the matter is simple. So who's joined us this lovely evening? Lex says, evening Sean and all, good evening Lex. Jerry son of me. Uh, Sean all in the chat, great edit on the triple six video by the way. Thank you very much. Uh, I, do, I do think it were a better gig than even I put out on the live stream because I put a couple of images in there that really helped the game a little bit. So good for that. I'm surprised it didn't go a bit further to be fair but then YouTube are doing, well it's not actually YouTube I don't think, it's 7 7 Brigade and Unit 8200. The Talmud Shaggers and the Goyim that want to be Talmud Shaggers uh, attacking their own. So there's a lot going on this week in relation to my Twitter and also uh, the manipulation of this channel. So it's sad. It's sad indeed, but never mind. If you were on the website at all this week, I uh, tried to do an update and completely killed it. But then, of course, not being on the Magic Cabbage, I found it very easy to rectify it. Which were good because usually I'd have panicked and shit myself. And I'm, uh, uh, but not being on the magic cabbage again really does help in relation to you keeping focused and whatever it is you're into and doing. You may want to consider getting off that stuff because it, it just makes the game so much easier. So thanks for that, Jerry. PY says, evening all, evening Paul. Slipknot says, all right, Sean, Jackie, and everyone, good evening. Slipknot, and good evening, Jackie, now that I know who you are. Uh, in there in the background. Paul says, good evening, Sean, and everyone, good evening, Paul. Anthony Mothergrove says, good evening, Sean, and also to the Wise Asylum audience. Nice to meet you, Anthony. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed Friday. It was good. We must do it again, all of us. The, the same amigos. Uh, good energy going on there. And, of course, we've got Dr. Trev, who's now got me on all sorts of stuff. So I'm doing colloidal silver. We've, uh, we're doing the uh, methylene blue, and we've added... Ascorbic acid, which is vitamin C. The only thing I've report on that so far, I've tried it today, is no blue piss anymore. So the vitamin C and the meth blue together, I would suggest uh, in making your body absorb both. So that's an interesting gig, is it not? Because vitamin C shortage is the cause of a lot of uh, issues that people run off to uh, Dr. Death for. And I'm sorry, I was snotting. I know, watch my video back and I was making some right noises in my nose. So excuse me, but I'm just not going to have that least today. And if I have to do that, I will. Anyway, there we go. Um, so, evening, Anthony. Mark says, evening, show. Good evening, Mark. And Cos973, we got the fist, we got the face and the thumbs up. Now then, how do? How do to the cock? How's it going? It's to your eight to one. Uh, Guitar Girl says, good evening everyone, last week was brilliant, thanks Sean, you are more than welcome, 
And I'm glad that the Wise Asylum is really proving itself to be attracting smart people. And that has got to be good because we need to know that there's still smart people around today. And let's hope we can advance that as we go through next week's especially when I give you the insight into what the fuck all the secret society is about, what the real game has been about, why the Second World War was all about destroying all the architecture from the Aryan Christian uh, Rome, uh, and why they planted Tartaria on us and said, oh, it belonged to Tartaria. No, it didn't. Never did. It was Western Christendom in its entirety. Remember, Russia in the Second World War enveloped half of Europe. Yeah, Russia, yeah. Let's think about this. Well, who were running Russia? Would it be Bolsheviks by any chance, the communists? Are you damn right it were? The Second World War wasn't about attacking Jews. It was about killing Jews that were real Jews so that they could flood this coming Israel with all the fruit bats from Russia that Catherine the Great had pulled together when she attacked Khazaria and uh, the Crimea as a whole. Put them in the pogroms, trained them all how to uh, set up... Uh, financial systems, and every time they invaded a country, in would come the uh, Talmud Shaggers to set up the financial system on behalf of the Prussian Holy Roman Empire, controlled by the Holy See. Yeah? <coughs> Are we seeing the picture? Are we seeing the picture now? Now, there seems to be a bit of movement from the old Catholics uh, about fucking time sat on your laurels, playing with yourself, there seems to be a bit of a movement where Catholics are starting to come to the fore. That's got to be good. Because if Catholics and Protestants can't come together, we're in a mess. So that's good news. Let's crack on, but don't be pushing that shit that's coming out of the Vatican. Because it's a sealed deal. The fruit bats have took over the asylum. So we can't be tying ourselves to any of that malarkey. Okay, the Holy See are running it, and all these are aristocrats that we have across the West, especially in America, because they've bred into America from here, all especially from Britain. All your elites over in America are bred here with these Talmud Shagger women, ensuring that this dark, evil eye system is being manifest everywhere. That's what's going on. Right, where are we? Steve says, we all need to get these streams sure to increase viewers. Well, we don't really want idiots here. We don't want psychopaths and nut jobs. You know what I mean? I'd rather it just slowly go and people that come, the people that are smart, wise, and want to learn from it, want the keys that they haven't got because they didn't join secret societies. Well, you don't need to join secret societies, folks. You don't need to take any oaths to life in the mix because we don't care. We give it free because it's spiritual knowledge and it's free. There's no nothing. Uh... Donations are always welcome, by the way. It does help things, but of course it's free. There's no rules here, except if it's good for you, you want to listen, you're learning something, great. I like it. And that's it. So, yeah, to a point, but we only want proper people here. We don't want the fruit bats. Otherwise, I'll not be able to read these streams, these chats, and we won't be able to have a chin wag, will we? Will there be spaz faggots all over the show talking out their ass? Um... Jerry Sonomic says, all ears, and we'll check it out, Sean. Thanks, brother. Good, because you're going to like this. And then next week, we're going through another similar kind of situation with an old more fruit bats. Um, and, of course, I can show off my tune again. So I do like to show off my tune. Um, so there you go. But you can always turn the tune off if you want to listen back to it later. That's, that's the buzz of it. Mew says, good morning, afternoon, evening to one and all joining the Wise Isle for the Sunday Sermon. Or eat, Sean. All right. Now, I've tried to make Mew, Slipknot, and Ant Anthony uh, mods, but Slipknot, your channel doesn't recognise when I try it. Mew's, yours wouldn't play out, and Anthony, yours wouldn't either. Unless it comes through next week, so I don't know. So I think it's time we had a bit more, uh, a few more mods, because Paul does nod off uh, pretty early. So, yeah, we, we, we could be a bit open later on if the fruit bats decide to attack. So, I don't know whether Jace is around. Uh, we've not seen him. He likes to stay in the background sometimes. But, I've given it a shot, so we'll have to see. But, Slipknot, your channel just doesn't get recognised in the gig. So, I don't know what's going on there. So, morning, uh, evening to you, Mew. June says, 
Good evening, Sean and chat. Evening, June. We've got some summit for you for over there in Ireland. Uh, as I said, I don't know if you've missed that. Uh, PY says, still got my mic, so, okay. Jew says, in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. Yes, indeed. But remember, the man himself never said he were a king. Didn't want to be a king. Did he? Never said it. Apart from the only time he said it, kingdom uh, of my father is with him. And it is. Entirely. Which is why I don't need secret societies. I pull it out my uh, my solar plexus. It just comes out. Um, now then. Mark says, Sean, I have unbelievable lucid dreams. Remembered it all to write it down. Well, I'm still having massive lucid dreams all night. They're not just, oh, uh, all night. Right up till I wake up. Now, I have noticed I'm still a bit fatigued. And uh, my sleep pattern seems to be slipping a bit. And I'm not going to sleep uh, when I get my head on pillar. Uh, and so I'm trying to go to bed at like, a reasonable time. So usually up to two, half two, three o'clock on this doing stuff. So I've been trying to pull that back a little bit, but it doesn't seem to be working. So that's the only negs I can say. Uh, I'm into my seventh week, but I'm feeling fine and I like the whole gig. I can't see myself ever going back on that stuff. I'll tell you that now. Um, where are we? So yeah, that's good. And if they do say don't leave, you're going to do your dreams, write it down. Uh, Loki T4 President, great channel. Thank you very much, my good man. Mark says, all my devices were attacked PY music. Oh. Oh dear, Mark. Guess it is to be expected. They don't like us. Oh, you can sort it out. Okay. Uh, dream, you old China. We missed you for the last couple of weeks. Where have you been? Are you alright, darling? Late again. Well, we don't mind her here. We don't mind. We had some Glaswegians on last week. From Glasgow. Oh. How about that? Taking over, taking over Scotland there. Um, so I train, joke, joke. Uh, Andrew says, "Greetings, and um, finally my head a live stream. Time difference is bad with Iraq. Are you in Iraq, lad? What's happening in Iraq? I've got, to, I've bought some of your D knives, and uh, they've gone up quite a bit, and then they're just staying steady. So hopefully, so you're in Iraq, lad. How's things going on over there at the moment? Because." I think as soon as this deal's done, uh, America are pulling out completely, aren't they? And going to leave you to it. I think uh, there's a big debt they're claiming you have to pay. Of course. This is the way the, the banking system rolls. It invades you and then won't leave you until you pay huge amounts of dollars. And of course, the economy doesn't get in the United States. The Talbot Shag is getting So that they can further manifest their evil eye. Um... Sunday is the new Sabbath. Yay! Well, we've been through that. I have a few videos that you might want to look back on. There's the Genesis one. There's the Sabbath. Because the Sabbath isn't reached until you achieve full spiritual enlightenment in this time. Then you're on the Sabbath. So it's not a, f a daily gig, really. But I take your point, and thanks for that, Jew. Jerry Sonamick says, Talking mullum tincture to clear the lungs. Well, that's interesting because I've, I've bagged into some on my live stream that are, seem to be obsessed with mullen. And I do like the flower. It's a very nice flower. I always see it when I'm out and about, you know. It's weird, though. It doesn't grow the same every year. It doesn't always grow back every year. Sometimes it misses a year. But I do like the pink ones. Um, um, so that clears the lungs, does it? That's interesting. Sweetness and light says clove oil, not clive. I hate iPhone autocorrect. Well, clove oil, I've got some of that. It's good for teeth, isn't it? If you have toothache, it wrecks your tooth so you can't feel anything. So it's pretty potent stuff, that clove oil. Anthony says, it was indeed an absolute pleasure to meet your acquaintance and, of course, the other chaps in attendance. Great day, thoroughly enjoyed. Looking forward to the next one. And I like your car, lad. Very nice. Very nice car, indeed. Um, so, Jace. Jace, I'm glad you're lurking there in the background, my old matey. I never doubted you, to be honest, and I know you like to keep in background, but welcome, and we do like to see you. You should always let us know you're there, and then we know that the Aussies are watching. Tony says, evening, Sean, and everyone, nice to be about for a life for a change, and it's nice to have you. 
Mew says, thanks, Sean. The good morning is for you, Jess. Excellent. Slipknot says, cheers, Sean. Great day, Mew. Yeah, we were excellent. Dr. Trev. He's, he's Slipknot. Dr. Trev. Okay. Are you? I hope he's not. If I die, you know where to go. It's him. That Dr. Trev's killing me off. So just keep that in mind as well. Um, now then, where are we? Uh, good day, Mew gets here. That's Jace. Jerry Sonny Mick, Jace. Right, so you're all chatting, that's good. Uh, Slim says, You won't write, rest properly if you lose your dream. Well, that could be it, but I'm, the, I'm pretty sure that it's meant to be, to be honest. Um, yeah, it's interesting, but I'm seeing enemies that uh, with faces now, so I'm getting a little picture of some of the little shitbags that are uh, playing against me here, and that's interesting in and of itself. So I'm quite happy with that side of it. I'm just, the fatigue side is a little bit, you know, I mean, because I want to get stuck into some graft. Um, and then I want to start a gym because I need to, I need to start looking like Rambo again. I'm, let, let it go. I've got a big fat belly. I'm pregnant with twins. And I don't know whether they're aliens or not, shape-shifting aliens. They might be. But uh, I'm pregnant. I need to go to the gym. I need to get on my bike and get up gym so I can look like Rambo and show off. Anyway, uh, March is back by Gita as it is. Have you read it? I certainly have, twice. I've read it, everything like that, all of it. I read the, th so back to that because I didn't finish. So I was reading the doctrine, the Buddhist doctrines, I was reading the Sanskrit stuff, which is Vedas, Bhagavad Gita, all that goes with it. I was also reading the Peruvian um, Popova. And the Theosophists, because I wanted to see, I wanted to see the originals, and I wanted to see how Theosophy were playing with it. Now, when I was doing that, because obviously that's when I was coming to understand the chakra system, what I started to do was, not perhaps every day, but a couple of times a week, I'd give myself half an hour, where I'd settle myself down, still myself, and then I'd write down thought forms that were coming through my mind. And I'd just do that. And then when I looked at it after, you could think, oh, interesting. But then this was the important part. I started to write down the thought forms that I would pay attention to and then pull it into my being. And that's where I got the measure of dark light in me, in that there were an overburdens of me picking up the dark stuff. Right? Very interesting. Because once I started to see it in that way, that's when you can start to realise that how you purify yourself is by not picking up on the dark stuff. You with me? And this is how I did it back in the 90s. This was the process I used while studying all these esoteric uh, systems. But more importantly, I could see which parts of me were negative and pulling it in. And... That were the cleansing side. That's where I put my effort in to cleanse. Now, you know, you've got all these gurus say, oh, you just need to do yoga. Well, fuck me. I know loads of people that do yoga and they're complete fruit bats. So yoga in and of itself is not going to, it's not going to cleanse your, 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 your electromagnetic system to get these wheels spinning for balance. It's about being aware of who you are and what kind of thought forms you pull into yourself by giving them focus. Then you can cleanse that. Once you start cleansing that, that's when you start to cleanse the root, the sacral and the solar. Yeah, that's when you start to get right in tune with nature as a natural progression. And if you're not in tune with nature, you will never understand that that's available to you. But these are the points that you notice and see when you know you're on the right track. And you're moving in the correct manner. You're cleansing yourself down here. You know, you're not allowing the negative to come in. You're not focusing to it. You can't stop sometimes the things floating in and out because you're around people. You're in areas that have negative thoughts. They've got these towers up now. But you're in control of which ones you focus to and pull into your system. So that's what I did and that's the situation I uh, used to learn that it, the important part about cleansing them three chakras is about working on what thought forms you give power to. Very important. So that's that's the gig in relation to how you cleanse. 
You're going to be helped. But it ain't going to do it in and of itself, let's put it that way. It might help unblock things if you've got things blocked. But any kind of fitness regime is going to do that anyway. Um, right, so where we are? The Bhagavad Gita, is it? Yeah, read that. I'll look into it uh, at my end, Sean, see if there's anything wrong my end in regards to moderating. No problem. Well, it may come up next week. So I've put them in. Apart from uh, Trev, it didn't. Yours weren't even. Your channel wasn't even recognised by YouTube to put it in. So I don't know what's going on there. Sweetness and light says, "Been off the cabbage for over a year, and I'm still having a dream every night." Uh, this be met loved ones who have passed like it's actually real. I can remember them too. Well, I think what it is when you're on cabbage, you are dreaming, but you just don't remember them. That's how I've always seen it. Because sometimes you do have dreams and you do remember them. Uh, I mean, I always got warnings of dreams when the state were gonna kick, trying to kick me head in, you know. Even though I were knocked out on the magic. Uh, Jerry Sonomic says it's all GTSY again. Great channel here. Good. Is that good to see you? Yeah. Maybe. Um, Anthony says Slipknot. Blah, blah, blah. Nice to meet you, my good man. Okay. Andrew says, uh, the script is playing out here and easy to follow. The agenda wish, the Iranian-backed militias, etc. USD is being phased out fast. Yeah, I mean, anybody out there, you just get yourself a couple of hundred quid with the Iraqi denoys. Because there's a potential you could uh, boost your income massively when it finally reboosts. And if it's going to pay off its debts to the US, it's in the US's interest then. Because the US has got billions and billions invested in the denoy. So if the agreement's made, it's in the interest of the banking system to up it in a big way because the America, American elites make absolute trillions. So, yeah, so well, thanks for that. So the script is playing out here and easy to follow the agenda with the Iranian-backed militias. So there are Iranian-backed militias going on there, yeah, well, fair enough. Uh, but Rome controls uh, Iran, by the way, I just thought I'd tell you. The Holy See completely controls Iran, as well as America, uh, Britain, India, China, Australia, Canada, Europe, Russia, everywhere. It, it, the Holy See controls everything, and they are the evil eye. That's who they are. And they've taken over the Vatican system completely, sealed in 1963 with Vatican II, because the warnings of Fatima weren't taken on. And that... Is the responsibility of Catholics whether they like it or not so I'm glad you've come to that agreement and understood that Catholics get off your asses now and join the game stop holding that bag of shit in our regard as Malachi Martin told you the real church is still there it's just not in that shit all place anymore just keep that in mind and it's good that you're rising Protestants I'm giving up on you I'm giving up on you because you're so fucked up it's unreal I've tried my best for many, many years, but you are so fucked up with Freemasonry and evangelical shite, Jehovah's Witness shit, Mormon shit. It's, it's sad. It's sad to say the wasps have been completely annihilated. Um, Jerry Sonomic says, um, Yeah, Sean, it's a two-year cycle on the mullen. You can take capsule or get the leaf and crush it. Tincture, I find convenient. Well, I'd definitely go and get it. I wouldn't want to be buying it. I want to do it myself. Tree says, I miss you and the crew still hanging on, though. Are you all right, darling? If you're not, give me a ring it week. Um, Anthony says, uh, and last but not least, Mupit, thanks, bro, for contributing to make it possible. Tree says, don't know my arse from the elbow at the morning, uh, at the mum funny, but I watched last week's a couple of days ago. Fabulous. Thanks, Tree. Uh, hi everyone, says Trine, blah blah blah. Time for a move before the lesson starts. Get yourself a brew on. Because we'll have a bit of a jingle on. I like to show off. We'll jingle on. And then we'll, I'll show you the document. But for you Irish guys, you need to get a grip of this. Stop drinking the poison piss. Not just Ireland, everybody. Um, duh, 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 duh. We should speed it. Yep, yeah, good, 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 good. Um, so, um, Trend hydration, if you can add some turmeric and a pinch of black pepper, also nettle seed or tea will help push out the uric acid. 
some more things you can try, although, and that's Jerry Sonny Mick. Right! Trees having strange dreams. Okay, dream daughter and Dan. Oh, maybe they, you know, remember, everything's changing up there. The, 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 uh, the barriers are opening up. For people that are aware and are picking it up, if you're spiritually aware and you've passed a lot of trips, you're going to get the good stuff. Jot it down, we can always discuss it. To business. Right, first we're just going to, I'll just pop this through for you. Oh, shit. I am so clever. I'm so good at this. Um, oh, hang on. Yeah, well, that's why it's not doing it, because I am thick. Here's me thinking I had it all set up beforehand, because I were amazing and fantastic, and... No. So, uh, you just bear with me while I just fanny on. Here we go. Right, this is for all my muckers that ever went to Northern Ireland and suffered like you did. This is what you did it for, boys. Martin McGuinness, former provisional Irish, provisional IRA leader, offering up a Masonic handshake with Queen Elizabeth. Everything is set up to play the divide and conquer games. And there he is. And there's your Masonic handshake, chaps. Everything you suffered through the 70s, you weren't working for her. You were working for the evil eye to fuck us over. And that should be enough for you fellas to see. It's not what you want to be fighting for anymore. So I've put this together as a document, guys, and it goes through the Guinness family. So don't be drinking the poison piss. There's a few of the fruit bats. Daphne. <laughs> Same age as us, Gen X. These are the uh, Baddens. Now, Milk Mitford sisters, very important, not just for this clan, but for when we move into next week's. These are the the Talmud Shagger females, how they've got them into us. So, very interesting, you have a look at that. Um, yeah, Bank of England's involved, Financial Conduct Authority, all oh, this is what these family are involved in. Very important, very powerful, and they're the ones flooding your nation with immigrants. And then you've got the Hennessy family, even more important than the Guinness family. And what are Hennessy all about? Oh, poison piss. Yeah, Papal Knights, Equestrian Order, Holy Sepulchre, Pontifical Knight Order, St. Gregory, Lockheed Martin. Yeah, Stock Exchange Union, Texas Petroleum Corporation, United Way of Tri-State, Coast Guard Academy. DNA Plant Technology Corporation. Yeah, I level Vatican Bank of this fella. And that's Edward Hennessy. Uh, John Hennessy, a very powerful guy, this guy. Silicon Valley Godfather, board member of Google, Cisco Systems, Atheros Communications. John Pope Hennessy, British Irish politician, governor of Hong Kong. Yeah, very important guy, this fella. Very powerful man. Uh, and this is their gig, this is their mark, it's the iconic fist grabs the axe, first to 12 blah blah, there it is, we see that in the Shriner system don't we, which they've offered up to Islam with their uh, sword, it's the same gig, this is who's running it, uh, French political dynasty, so cognac, poison piss from this bunch, Louis v v v Vuitton, again same all the Poison Piss Brigade, the United the British Empire, House of Bonaparte, of Grand Office of the French Legion of Honour, Arnold, which is the Arnold family, which is what Catherine the Great were from, Prussians. Then we've got the Bailey family, another bunch creating Poison Piss. There's this heraldry. Uh, Anthony John's Bailey, Knight Order of the Bath. Yeah, because they've killed you all with the poison piss. And there, look. How many of you love that shit? You're drinking the poison piss, folks. You're funding them to do this. Now, look at this one. Andrew John Bailey, Governor of the Bank of England. Executive Director of Financial Conduct Authority. And he was recommended by Shadiv Javid, who was the Chancellor of Finance. Uh, and he took over Governor of the Bank of England in 2020. 
Powerful people, boys and girls. And this is the clan getting back together to look like the peasants. Uh, back in 1944. See, they play up the peasantry stuff just to keep you off track. And now I'm going to show off and I'm going to give it to you with the music while I blow my nose. So I'll just switch off that. What do you see as the biggest challenges in, in conservation? Yeah, the, the, the growing human population. Because if where we are, there's nothing else. And do you have views about what should be done about that? Can't you guess? What is at stake is more than one small country. It is a big idea, a new world order. I've come to this house of the people to speak to you and all Americans. Where diverse nations are drawn together in common cause to achieve the universal aspirations of mankind. Peace and security, freedom and the rule of law. Got me running, got me running, got me running, got me running. Got me running. Got me running. You ready? You ready? Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. You ready?
The Poison Piss Brigade. Ooh! I've been enjoying a Moretti though, I have to say. There's no shite in it, isn't it? It's, but a Moretti I do like. It's got a thick taste to it. It's even better than Peroni. So I have to say I'm calling Poison Piss, but I've actually started having one or two of them Morettis. I'm quite enjoying it too, so. Never mind, as long as you don't get too blasted with it to uh, get yourself together. But uh, So that that's that. Now, let's crack on with... Um, where are we? Right. So I just put this together just to cement what I've already said last week in relation to what these three lower chakras are about. Um, and it says basically, chakras are the energy centers of the body. They're located in the astral body along with the spine starting at the base and running upwards to the crown of the head. The astral body is the energy body residing inside our physical body. Now, of course, all the fruit bats, when you see the symbolism and the serpent, because that's the use, the term used, freak out and call you uh, evil and lizard and all that. Okay, that's because they're thick. Because they're, they're stuck in the, on the cube and the masters, of course, are keeping them from understanding this properly. The chakras radiate a specific colour and energy. Each one coincides with a gland in the physical body. Well, they don't actually represent a colour, in truth. Um, it, but we've given them colours, as it were. And, of course, then, from those coloured symbolism, you get... Uh, you'll see it in symbolising all the secret society stuff, the religious stuff, etc, etc. Each one coincides with the gland in the physical body since each chakra relates to specific spiritual, emotional and psychological and physical aspects of our being. It is believed that their blockage or malfunction can lead to physical, psychological and emotional disorders. The conscious awareness and balancing of these energy centres is essential, essential to balance them. And it is a conscious awareness. And the way I, the, the system I used, which I made myself, Pulling it from within, not copying any of these garbage things. You know, standing on my head and meditating. They were all that more like it. Uh, just let me check that you can see this stuff, actually. Yeah, you can see it. Amazing. Uh, so I just formed my own. And that was writing down what thoughts I were picking up on and pulling into my system. Because you're generating that energy then in your system. And it's negating these systems from actually working. And that's how I... Uh, raise my game in 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 this got myself out of the garden uh, back then in the 90s so it begins with the root chakra and there is its symbol and it's the element earth uh, the root chakra is the foundation of the physical structure of the body it is the first chakra in the energy body located at the base of the spine at the perineum between the anus and the genitals its location signifies its role as a link between the physical world and our internal energetic system. It is the centre of Apana Prana. Apana is the vital force required for all the excretion functions. Apana Prana is necessary for removing the toxins from the body and refreshing the connection to the earth. If the earth element is not brought into balance, it rots in the body and causes a variety of neg negative physical and mental conditions. Now, of course, we're dealing with electromagnetic energy here. So, as we've already discussed, you need to earth that energy that's collecting and going bad inside you. Earth it, you're giving yourself, you're cleansing your aura, and you give yourself another chance to keep it sweet. If you're going to keep picking it up again by being around the wrong people, doing the wrong things, and picking up on the negative stuff again, you're going to fill your auric field with this shit. And then you're going to spread it around you as well. See, this is another thing. When you start to pull these chakras together, I would suggest that even this technology that they're putting up everywhere won't be able to touch you. Um, so it's so important that we get this energetic, electromagnetic system under our control. Um, uh, yep, yeah, right. It relates to our basic primal needs of survival stability and support and represents the structure of our body bones flesh skin and ultimately the condition of the mind well everything in relation to this electromagnetic system is the foundation of your mind so you're going to get that again primal needs of survival so on the cheat sheet 
you know, the fruit bats to do manifesting the evil eye, they're using the mind and thinking, oh, well, what we need to do then is just kill everybody. We need to enslave everybody. That's because the fruit bats. Yeah, there's no spiritual uh, essence to the to the mind. Yeah, man means mind. Remember. So this version of man that in the three negatives, under the religions as they are, uh, is an evil mind, and they're trapped in it, kept there deliberately, because the fruit cakes. The chakras are made up of energy only, so they don't have their own colours, but each of the seven chakras reflects the colours of their elements and surroundings, so basically we've given them that. The root chakra is surrounded by the element earth, so it reflects the colour of deep red. The root chakra colour symbolises primal instincts of strength and vitality, and is linked to our physical and emotional needs of survival and self-preservation. Yeah, so if it's balanced at that point, you're not going to think you have to kill everybody and enslave everybody, are you, for your own survival. You're going to realise that cooperation, trust, is vital in order to manifest something good, or as we called it, civilization. So you're not pre-creating systems where everybody's afraid to not go along with the rules dished out by the fruitcakes, yeah? Can you see the difference? It's cooperation, and that's what we've lost, and that's what we're losing all the time. I mean, you can't trust people these days to not be doing business. They're trying to, oh, I'm helping you, but they're not helping you, they're doing business. So it's not help, they're helping themselves. They think, well, if I applicate that, I might get that. That's, that's the game most people are playing, and it's getting worse and worse and worse. Uh, the root chakra is surrounded by the, I've done that. Effects upon emotions and mental health, so the effects... Of, of the root chakra on your emotions and the mental health because your emotions of course you remember that it's moving up so your root chakra is moving then into the sacral chakra which is where all the sexual energy is is, is uh, based so if your root chakra is screwed your sexual energy is going to be completely screwed a balanced root chakra can provide emotional strength in the face of fear and anxiety that's courage yeah, no matter what's coming at you, you're not going to run into the negative, I have to kill everybody to survive. You, you're going to start, you're going to trust the universe that it's got your back and it wants to show you something. Because the only way you can conquer fear is by experiencing events and things that you fear. And not doing the negative of the root chakra, because it'll put you back into the cycle again. Once you start to trust the universe, trust your inner calling and that the path you're on is what you, your, your soul has put you on, and you trust that little bit more, that's when you start to, to the word is um, transcendentalism. You transcend the negative, and it starts to spin correctly. A balanced root chakra can provide emotional strength in the face of fear and anxiety. The results in feeling grounded and secure. An imbalance here can cause a variety of mental illnesses. Stress, which affects the overall physical wellness of the avatar. The root chakra is associated primarily with survival, but other emotions linked to this energy centre include feeling safe, feeling secure, survival mindset, feeling grounded, and self-preservation. Now, an imbalance at that root, you're going to join a religion. You're going to join a secret society. But I won't say religion, because religion is forced upon people from birth. But when you get to adulthood, that's where you... you your imbalance is going to make you feel like the only way you can be safe, secure, to survive is to join a secret society. When all they're interested in is capturing people, authing them to secrecy, they feel safe. Yeah, Giving them what they want to keep them happy so they don't feel like they have to leave. Signs and symptoms of a blocked root chakra. Emotional symptoms. So it's moved up to the, 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 the sacral chakra. The imbalance at the root shows itself in the emotional state, the, the uh, sacral chakra in these terms. Food, water, shelter and survival are our primary needs. The main responsibility of this energy centre is to satisfy these basic needs. Overeating, hoarding of material items, greed for money and fear of those around you are negative expressions related to survival. These are all signs of an imbalance. Talmud. Yeah? 
War Doctrine. When our basic survival needs are not being met, uh, the chakra becomes dysfunctional and causes a disconnection from spiritual values. One becomes animalistic in the thought patterns. As a result, people with a root chakra blockage or imbalance tend to experience a range of negative emotional symptoms, some of which include hoarding of material items, greed for money or materialism, lack of ambition and direction. In, and that shows itself, don't they? How many people, uh, because they want material items, will do what mummy and daddy say, even though mummy and daddy are clearly fruit bats. You're hanging on, you're doing what you're told because you want what you know you're going to get when you die. You're not honouring your mother and father there. You're copying. To so honour your mother and father when you know they're wrong, you tell them. If they don't like it, you fuck off. And leave them to it. Insecurity, disconnection and isolation, anxiety, depression and self-pity. How many people today are in anxiety, depression and self-pity? Physical symptoms. When the root chakra centre is blocked and imbalanced, it can cause mental stress which become visible in a physical form such as lethargy, panic attacks or anxiety, digestive disorders, health problems in the colon, bladder and lower back, unexplained aches and pains in the body, in the lower abdomen and pelvis, reproductive issues, insomnia or excessive sleeping. Genetic traits can show themselves in particular physical malformations of the avatar specific to racial spiritual conditions. From a scientific base, this shows itself in terms of the avatar's synchronicity to the golden mean, either closer to or the distance from. This is how God maps out the spiritual condition of man. So basically, he's saying there, as a race, you'll all have particular traits. And there'll be, the measure, if you want to look for where they are spiritually, is the further away from the beauty of the, the golden mean they are, the more imbalanced they are, as a race and of course if God's in charge and he's deciding where you're born he's put you there for a reason because that's what you've got to come to to move through so basically that's what it's saying you can tend to see so the more beauty you're holding the more the closer you are to the golden mean and your genetics are showing that uh, I hope that makes sense the root chakra healing how to unblock and balance well, I've just gone through how I did it, because you have to do that for everyone, in my opinion. As a survival centre and earth grounding diode, the root chakra is the main point of grounding for the avatar's electrical system on the earth. It is the root and sensory instinctual foundation of all chakras. Stabilising the foundation of the body's electromagnetic system is of prime importance for a balanced sense of self. Identifying working on your chakras regularly ensures proper root chakra healing. There are several ways to unblock your root chakra. Grounding chakra meditation and yoga possess are, uh, are both effective ways to encourage physical and mental strength in the body. Repeating affirmations for the root chakra also helps set positive intentions that break old habits and forge better ones. Well, again, like I said, going through and, and, and looking, putting it on paper so I could see which kind of thought patterns I was pulling in and focusing to is how you can, you're repeating you can see the, the repeat of effort and how you're affirming the negative stuff uh, and the positive intentions, which mean you're breaking free from that. Uh, you're breaking the habits. You're cleansing yourself, you know. Below, we provide a three simple chakra balancing techniques you can practice daily to restore balance to this energy center. Trust more, which is getting more and more difficult, is it not? Open to all possibilities. The earth provides a safe place for me. So you're not thinking I've been born here and it's terrifying, that you've been born here for a reason. And if you follow your natural path, it's going to provide safety for you. It doesn't mean you're not going to experience shit. You know, and that's what most people have an aversion to. They believe they're here and they haven't, to, they haven't to actually have any shit. Well, no, you're here to learn. Uh, I trust that Avatar's internal wisdom, that's the kingdom within. The more you come into contact and reality of that, the better your life starts to be. Uh, it may be bad at first because, of course, if you're going to trust the internal wisdom, it may put you on the path of shit you need to see and experience so you can respond differently to it. And I trust the universe will support me. Very important. You've got to trust that kingdom within. Reconnecting with nature. 
Nature is a set of balanced frequencies. Uh, being in her, so I was, my spelling is terrible. Being in her is one of the most effective ways of healing the entire being. Lack of exposure to nature can be toxic and mentally draining. This creates anxiety, lack of self-confidence and energy blockages. Sometimes the only therapy we need is spending time walking and rejuvenating in nature. The feeling of the grass beneath your feet, the smell of the ocean breeze, the sound of the chirping birds and a moment of solitude underneath the shade of a tree brings peace and harmony. A healthy and balanced root chakra creates a strong connection to earthly instincts. We no longer approach our existence with a base fear. It improves overall confidence and increases the sense of self-worth. The energy of this chakra allows everyone to harness courage and perseverance during challenging times, without shifting into thought patterns that require some kind of violent or manipulative action against things and entities outside of ourselves. Yeah? The sacral chakra, but there it be its symbol. Okay, you can see that's the crescent moon in there. Okay. And it's the crescent moon, the waning moon, if you look at it. Right, so the sacral chakra. So the root chakra is specific to Judaism. The sacral chakra is specific to Islam. So if you're born into Judaism, you've got to learn that just self-preservation doesn't mean you have to knock everybody off, kill everybody and control everybody. Being born into Islam, you're here to learn how to balance the sexual energy. The sacral chakra consists of multiple circles, a crescent moon and a lotus flower with six petals. The circles and crescent moon represent the cyclical nature of life, death and rebirth. While the six petals symbolise the six negative aspects of our nature that we need to overcome to bring balance to our minds and body. Now, of course, you've got six there again, yeah? Element is water. The element of the sacral chakra is jala, meaning water, and governs the emotions. The water element governs our sense of joy and pleasure in life and is associated with our sexuality sensory desires, emotions and creativity. When the element is getting refreshed, it keeps our emotions and desires in balance. But when the element rots, we become addicted to sensory pleasures and controlled then by our emotions, which are obviously negative. Prana. The prana associated with the second energy centre is viana and is, is the prana of circulation. We get it from the element water. When we have too much, we feel hyperactive and unable to focus. And under this premise, we can act in insidious ways. Now, alcohol has a very strange effect on people that are imbalanced at the water level. The Native Americans didn't have it, and so do Muslims. They, do, they won't react well to alcohol. Of course, the guys that have been born here, it's a different kettle of fish. Uh, they can drink like any Englishman, because, of course, they're fucking English. When we have too little, we feel lethargic and disconnected from our emotions and become insular and disconnected from the earth. It is in this chakra that we design our life vision. When the sacral chakra is balanced, the sacral chakra shapes our internal desires. It is the centre of passion. It awakens the power of our true creative force. In the physical sense, the condition of our sacral chakra manifests in how we treat others. Not what we believe to be true, but the real and tangible expression seen by others in how you treat them, especially when it comes to intimate relationships, be that girlfriend, boyfriend or husband and wife. So we all have this idea, don't we, of how we present ourselves to, to the world, but obviously everybody out there can see the reality of it. So the discrepancy between how we see ourselves and how others see us is the measure. Yeah? So and how you treat your girlfriend, your boyfriend, or your husband and wife. You may come up with con conjure may massive amounts of reasons as to why you have to be a twat. But everybody else can see that actually you're just a twat. Yeah? And you can see that entirely as a measure of the sacral chakra balance in how you treat your husband. How you treat your wife. Right? It is at this centre that we form and thus empower our internal choice as we create intimate relationships. Motivated by pleasure, the sacral chakra promotes our idea of what we see as our emotional well-being. 
It plays an active role in our sexuality and the expression of our emotional needs and desires. So if sex to you is something disgusting and dirty, you are seriously imbalanced because sex is a very pleasurable thing. Yeah, if you want to think that sex means you have to rape people, you fucked. Not only are you imbalanced, you're fucked. Totally. Right? Emotional intimacy, relationships and the sacral chakra. The chakra is centred on personal identity and how it responds to the seductive forces of the physical world. Under an open and balanced sacral chakra, one has the ability to enjoy the senses with the discipline and keep their emotions and relationships in balance. So if you're seeing a woman walking down the street, like we created in our civilization, you will get excited and you'll appreciate it, but you're not going to want to jump on her and rape her, are you? You can't then show her, oh, it's her fault, I had these feelings. No, you have the feelings that are brought up in us all, but you don't have any self-control because you're a fruit bar. Uh, in the physical, this would be measured by the degree to which we honour our partner. There is no excuse here. The condition of our emotional self presents itself in the physical expression of this reality. So you can sit there fooling yourself all day, but for the measure of it, it's how you treat your emotional partner. So you can talk shit all day, but anybody that's wise and smart and balanced can see that you're a fruitcake. Under an open and balanced sacral chakra, we have the ability to take risks and experience positively, positivity, positivity and compassion fully in our relations with others, completely unfettered by the need to control and free from fear. So if you're running around making friends and you have this need to control the situations, know that you're afraid and that's how you're trying to satisfy the fear. Yes, if you're a control freak, it's not something good. You're terrified and you feel the only way you can control the situation is to have everybody under rules and regulations. Yeah? That's imbalance. When you start to recognise this, that's when you can cleanse it by offering up trust and seeing where it goes. When the second chakra is unbalanced, it causes emotional disturbances, reduced creativity, and obsession with sexual thoughts. Well, look at the races that look at the races that are the most creative. They're the ones that are the most balanced. They happen to be the ones right now that the fruit bat races are trying to destroy. They're trying to wipe us off the face of the earth. Okay. When the second chakra is unbalanced, it causes emotional. You have done that. Oh, sorry. It causes emotional disturbances, reduced creativity, and an obsession with sexual thoughts. When the sacral chakra is blocked, when the sacral chakra is blocked or imbalanced, you will express the conditions of emotional instability. You will either be oversensitive in your relations and become domineering, or you will lose touch with your emotions and become as cold as ice. You will have an addiction to sensory pleasure without any thoughts for the other. Everything will revolve around your sexual needs. Depression, anxiety and the fear of losing control in a relationship are all signs that this energy centre is blocked. It also affects our connection to various physical, physical aspects of life, like work, for instance. Physical symptoms of an imbalanced sacral chakra. Chronic lower back pain. Arthritis. Genital or sexual problems, hip issues, anemia, joint problems, low energy, spleen and kidney issues, premenstrual syndrome, and sinusitis, whatever that is. Overactive sacral chakra symptoms. An overactive sacral chakra means that there is too much viana being distributed throughout the body. Since the second chakra governs emotions, Overactive energy creates overwhelming feelings and emotions we can, which can manifest as extreme mood swings, dissatisfaction with life, addictive behaviours, feeling disconnected from the world, intense display of affection, uncontrollable sexual urges and sensory desires. Underactive sacral chakra symptoms. 
An underactive sacral chakra will affect your entire physical and mental well-being. When the sacral chakra is blocked, feelings ranging from uncertainty to an ability to cope with life's changes permeate. And from this, the need to belong to a religion becomes a major factor in the creative force. The path to freely express desires hinders artistic abilities, and you may begin to depend on others emotionally, resulting in a psychological imbalance and detachment from the self. Other symptoms include fear of pleasure, lack of creativity, fatigue, lack of desire, insecurity, detachment, low libido, and depression. Solar plexus. That's what us Aryans are all about. That's what we're born to. There's its symbol, and its colour is yellow. Its element is fire, so it's the, the, end, the sun's energy. So obviously, if you're frightened to death of uh, dealing with the sun's energy, you're going to want to stay at the moon, the lesser light. Element fire. The element of the solar plexus chakra is fire or agni. We receive fire from the sun in the form of heat. We get it directly from the sunlight, but also from the foods which we absorb, which absorb sunlight. Fire activates the prana samana which is the life force required for digestion and metabol metab metabolism. As a result, the fire energy is important for our digestion and ability to absorb nutrients. The element of fire ignites the light of consciousness that motivates us to strive towards success and good health. Spending too much time on the third chakra can cause burnout. However, not developing it can leave you feeling weak, fearful and inert. The love and happiness that we feel in our hearts actually originate in the third chakra and rise from there to the heart chakra. So, depending on what's going on in your bottom three depends on what your heart chakra is throwing out. So you can go, <gasps> all day. It means for go. When you feel like you can conquer the world as if there is a fiery ball of passion and power surging through you, this is when the solar plexus chakra is in action. The solar plexus chakra is the third chakra in the seven chakra system. This energy centre governs our ability to be confident, assertive and make decisions from a place of inner wisdom. It is also the key to unblocking our personal power and building a strong sense of self. When in balance we take full and complete responsibility for self. Our thoughts, our actions and as the third energy centre below the heart, when the root and sacral chakras are balanced, the creative force of our soul is boosted with the solar energy afforded to the solar plexus. Otherwise, you've got to do it with groupthink because there's loads of you doing it. That's when it's negative. To build the evil eye, it can only be done because there's shit loads of people building it. When you've got it right, you can do it all by yourself. And you can do it because you're pulling on that wisdom from within. The kingdom of my father is within. When in balance we take full and complete responsibility. Done that. Um, no, we don't, I don't. When this chakra is out of balance we experience feelings of insecurity, self-doubt and a lack of direction in life and another point at which we may look to give away our power to another. An institution, a secret society, a government, a psychologist, a psychiatrist, a priest, an imam, a rabbi, etc. If we cannot take full and complete responsibility for self and all our relations, perhaps due to imbalances in the two chakras below, then the confidence required to act in the image of the Creator is diminished. We're nowhere near Genesis 1. The measure of the man at this juncture can be seen in such descriptive forms as Alpha, Beta, Omega, Gamma, Sigma. The Gamma is probably the worst because they're very clever but they don't have the capacity of the alpha or beta to put it into action. Sigmas can do it same. Omegas, but the gammas, they call them narcissists today. So you really don't want to be uh, described or seen as a gamma personality. In its true balanced form, the expression of the, ma of the man in balance shows itself in the ability to master one's lower nature, to seek out like-minded relationships and to lead by recognising external stimuli and moving to create substance that is balanced with the internal instincts, emotions and spiritual law. Spiritual law being the most important. This is the meaning to operating in this realm from the kingdom within. 
Master this and the door to the higher realms becomes open. But the kicker here is to master and understand the balanced feminine energy whilst utilising the masculine energy to push and move the will and create something of worth in this realm. Yeah, so if you're pushing your will and it's imbalanced, evil eye. When you've balanced yourself in these three chakras, the feminine energy, you understand it. You understand it, you're not something that you're frightened of, you don't suppress it, you don't want to hate it, you don't feel you, you, you've got to be its boss. Because you've understood what it is. It's the source of all. And the masculine energy then there is the energy you need to move things forward, make things happen. Yeah? Not just sit there talking about you. You make it happen. That's the masculine energy in its balanced form. And if it's spiritually balanced, it's working within spiritual law. These are the people in history that, that leave something behind, that carries forward into the future. Now the negative will do the same as well. But remember, the negative needs gangs and gangs and gangs of you to build it. When you're in tune with the spiritual realm, one man can change the fucking world. This is the meaning to operate in this realm. Done that. Have I? Yeah. And to build something of worth in this realm, yeah. What is the solar plexus chakra? The solar plexus chakra spreads the fire element in your body, which brings energy, warmth, and light. This is the energy, also the energy center of the samana vaya or samana prana, which is the energy of digestion, intellect, ego, willpower, and aggression. Each form the qualities of the third chakra. Where is the solar plexus located? The solar plexus is located four finger breadths above the navel, just below the rib cage. To be more precise, it's on the line from the end of the sternum to the navel in the solar plexus. Manit means the shining gem, and pura means the place. So, manipura literally translates to place of shining gem. Fire is the shiniest element of all the five elements, and the solar plexus chakra is the energy center of fire. Therefore, the third chakra is called the place of fire, or manipura chakra. This, when you get this imbalance and you move up through the heart to the fifth, this is why these people are called the shining ones. Um, uh, where have I done? Uh, the the Manipura Chakra is the energy centre of the fire element and fire prana samana. It receives the element from the sun and the food containing heat and samana energy. When the third chakra is in balance, you feel confident, self-motivated, and have a sense of purpose. However, when surrounded by negative energy, you can suffer from low esteem and of control issues. Manipura chakra and emotions. The fire element is represented in the body as heat or agni. At the centre of the physical and astral body, the Manipura chakra attracts prana and manages this life energy in order to balance the body and mind. Excessive fire energy can create impulsive reactions such as anger and aggression, which is a sign of a blocked solar plexus chakra. The emotions associated with this energy center are excitement, happiness, depression and anger. Some other qualities include intellect, clarity, willpower, assertiveness, discipline, self-confidence and aggression. Because righteous anger, folks, isn't a negative. Uh, which you need, don't you, if you're defending yourself. A shortage of the element of Samana Prana can cause the chakra to move too fast. The opposite occurs when it does not refresh and over-accumulates. This causes an imbalance in the energy system. When the solar plexus chakra is blocked or imbalanced, it can manifest as various physical and emotional issues. As the third chakra is located in the upper abdomen, a blockage or imbalance can often cause di digestive issues. The physical symptoms of solar plexus chakra blockage may include indigestion, irritable bowel syndrome, eating disorders, excessive weight gain, ulcers, diabetes, issues with the pancreas, liver or colon, heartburn, sensitive or bleeding gums. A solar plexus chakra blockage or imbalance can also cause emotional problems such as over-analysis or paralysis by analysis, yeah? Overthinking. How many people do that? 
uncontrolled anger and irritation, low self-confidence, doubt and mistrust towards the people in your life. In, well, if the, some people need that doubt and mistrust, keep that in mind also. But if you mistrust everybody in your life, you're going to be in trouble, aren't you? You can never move forward. So consider that if that's the way you feel, are they assholes, you need to get rid of them, or are you being oversensitive? Apply a bit of trust in your life to try and mitigate that. Insecurity and low self-esteem. Need for continuous confirmation and approval from others. Unhealthy attachments to people in your life. Rigid and controlling behaviour. Self-victimising mentality. Lack of direction and motivation. And difficult at setting boundaries in your own life, which other people will exploit. When this energy centre is open and balanced, you feel confident, powerful and ready to take on any challenge that comes your way. Other signs of a solar plexus chakra opening include control over fear, a strong sense of self-confidence and self-worth. I'm fantastic and amazing. I know it. I don't care if anybody else believes it or not. I know I am. And everybody can reach that point. A clear sense of personal identity and purpose. Feeling empowered to take actions toward goals and dreams. So you're not just thinking about it, you're acting on it. Good digestion and a healthy metabolism. A sense of inner strength and resilience. Ability to make decisions with ease and trust in oneself. Willingness to take risks and step out of one's comfort zone. Clarity of mind and full control over your emotions. Okay? That's what you're aiming to achieve. Once you can see those points in your life, and you may have three or four, and then you can set, you can you can look at this now and think, well, that I've got that as positive. These are my negatives. Work on the negatives to create them into positives. And not everybody's an alpha, but betas are just as important to an alpha. Your right hand man, you know. Everybody, an al a good alpha needs beta. A good beta is there, putting things into action that the alpha's creating. You know, so if you don't want to be an alpha, it doesn't matter. Omegas oh, tend to be loners, they do it themselves, yeah, but work it out, which, which is your character trait, because there's descriptions about it for you to look at. Because over the oracle at Delphi is the term, know thyself. Know thyself is the most important data that you can take on because in knowing yourself you know your strengths you know your weaknesses you can find your position in this life and work to achieve it there's alphas there's betas you know that's how it works and so that basically is the structure of those three that people need to come to terms with in order that they can move to balance them now if we get back to egyptian Yeah, yeah, you've got the stars above, but before that you've got a female figure here, encapsulating life below the heart. She's called Nut. Yeah, and she sustains everything beneath them three chakras, and she won't let you pass. You ain't allowed to pass through until you've proven yourself worthy. So all this nonsense about them going to space and all that, it's just bullshit. They're full of shit. It's the evil eye fruit bats trying to blag you that they can actually do this stuff. Let me just alter that it's a little bit big. And it says, Nut was the personification of the heavens and the sky. She was the daughter of Shu and Tefnut and the granddaughter of Atom or Ra. Now they're all triggered. Ah, rah, he's evil. Fuck off. Who was often regarded as the creator god. Well, he was in Egyptian lore. Early Egyptian lore. Before the fruit battered it up with Osiris. The earth god Jeb was Nut's husband and brother. Nut was even said to be the mother of Ra. The sun god. In one myth, Ra used a tet or matet boat to travel across her body until noon. And then used the seclet boat until sunset. To return. Nut was often referred to as the cow goddess, who got some of the qualities of Hathor. See, you remember the cow is actually 
an animal that can give life sustenance without being killed. You don't have to like to eat it. It gives you milk and all the derivatives of. This is why it's sacred in some of the Indian cultures. Um, it's, a, it's a sacred animal because it sustains without it having to give you give up its life. It's believed that Ra took him up into the heavens on her back as a cow when he became tired of ruling. She is more commonly represented as a naked woman co covered with stars. And her body is held in an arch facing downwards. Her legs and arms are the pillars of the sky. And her feet and hands touch the ground at the four cardinal points on the horizon. Jeb is often depicted beneath Nut because of her association with the sun's rebirth. Nut became a mother-like figure and protector of the dead, whose picture was painted on the inside lid of the coffin to protect the mummy. Many festivals were dedicated in honour of Nut and celebrated throughout Egypt, such as the Festival of Nut and Ra, and the Feast of Nut. Nut appears in numerous depictions, yet no templates or specific cult centres are linked to her. Now, it says she looks after the dead. That's that's all those fixed to the cube. And then I think we have a, a few more depictions. Uh, just to, to cement further this idea, as I've said before, that the, it's the feminine that guards. Uh, the heavens. You will not get through that until you come into balance with the feminine energy. Yeah, the sac sacred feminine energy, not the fruit bat stuff. With these feminists running up and down, wanting to be males. That's just garbage. All that belongs to the masters of the evil eye to keep you fixed into those imbalances. Um, I think there's one more. And there's another symbol of nut. Now, of course, you've seen that everywhere as well, haven't you? So this is where the Egyptians, what they're symbolising, it's not as the, the fruit bats would have us understand. And then, of course, this document continues uh, with the, the heart chakra, but we're not at that point where we're dealing with this yet. But they are, there, they are in this document, which, of course, I'll put up at the end, and you can certainly appraise yourself with them. So that's that, I like it. Just to show you that everything I've said has teeth and it has reference in way older doctrines and knowledge than's afforded to the three religions based on the Abraham myth, Noah and all the shite that comes with it. Yeah, that's for the fruit bats fixed to the cube and the imbalance. Yeah, the garden and the garden god has to be male because, of course, unruly fruit bats need to be dealt with by the male, do they not? Well, they can't deal with unruly. You've got to at least balance yourself, show yourself true on spiritual law, because she doesn't have to deal with you. She loves you. And she's going to help you. And she's going to raise you above the heart chakra into the higher realms available to every single man, male or female, that gets born into an avatar, in this realm. So that's that malarkey. And next week we're going to go through. This eye game. What is it all about really? What are the secret societies all about? What have they been doing? Because you're going to be quite surprised. It's not as the fruit bats. Fixed into these. Cube religions. Believe. You know. It's just not. Uh, so. Don't Clive DeCole forget him. He is a shithead tied to UK column and feigned concern about my son-in-law on leukemia. I had a conversation with him and then at the end of he said, yeah, it cost you 500 quid an hour. So fuck Clive DeCole all day, you, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah? So yeah, uh, no interest in that piece of shit at all. So just to let you know, I've just seen that quickly there. So... What you guys been saying? Right, uh, where were we up to? Uh, bu -bu -bu. So yeah, we were talking about alcohol at that point. Oh yeah, they've no idea how pathetic they are and how it ruins them. I and an alcohol that you can't deal with because they don't accept it. They will not accept how they come across, how they actually are in the real world because they live in this bubble. But that's the same with any addiction in it, let's be honest. We have to fix ourselves into that addiction. So we have to convince ourselves that what we're doing 
is good for us. Um, it is very difficult to deal with alcoholics. It really is. Um, when they're sober, different game. And then once they ingest that poison piss, another character comes out completely different. And the the sad thing is for alcoholics, and I'll talk about this because my father was an alcoholic, is the the drunk character, or sorry, the sober character has no memory of the drunk character. And so it has no memory of what that drunken character creates. And that's a sad thing for people that are uh, have been took by alcohol. It's really, really sad, and it, it is sad. Because when they're sober, they're lovely, but as soon as you know they're going to enter into that cave, and out pops this evil creature. And I think it's really bad when that evil creature takes over the sober self. Uh, then they really have lost control, and that is the sad side of alcoholism, but that's not just alcohol, it's, it's all these drugs that they've got thrust about everywhere. It's quite sad. It, it, in fact, it's not quite sad. It's one of the main methods by which these elites have actually undermined everybody. Um, let's be honest. Um, so you guys just chit-chatting away. So Jerry says, the old 1,000-year lease on the planet in Dublin that is what we are told outwardly. Every time we looked at the at them, at who they are inwardly. Precisely, they're, they're they're pumping out poison piss. And Guinness, you know, it's it's okay, but it's full of iron, and it can, you know, all the paddies you see with bright red face, it's too much iron, and too much iron is very dangerous, and you can also get too much iron if you eat cereals. I had a mate that just ate cereals all the time because his wife didn't cook. And uh, he had so much iron in him, he had to have a pint taken out of his, his uh, pint of blood to every week. Every week. Now, I believe he came back right. Um, but he, he had to, I think he split up with his wife. He had to change his entire life, to change his lifestyle. Uh, and I believe that uh, he, he's actually, he's lost all his weight and I believe he's fine. So sometimes, you know, you get trapped in these situations, these relationships, and you're going nowhere. The only way that you're going to change it is to get out of that, change it, give yourself another chance. Uh, and then make the mind has to follow that event, doesn't it? If you keep arguing back and calling everybody names, you've not got yourself balanced. The event's happened, but your mind, your emotions haven't come onto terms with it, and you've not grown up kind of thing. And how many people do we know in that situation? Um, Jerry Sonoma McDiego. Mm -hmm. See, you, we, you know, we don't think of them like this, do we, these power people? How have they got the power? Because we're all giving it them. We're all giving it to them. Um, the red up ended triangle is being used as a symbol for peace in Gaza. Yeah, well, Hamas means terror. You know, I, I, these flags you see up and down everywhere, you don't see many here, I have to say, and you don't see Muslims here, in my turn, running around getting excited about it, you know what I'm saying? One or two mosques that are a bit fruit but you might see them get excited about some every now and again, but in general terms, the Muslims up here in the north, outwardly, don't appear to be sucking into the shit like they are in London. I mean, for God's sake, you know, how infantile can you get? They've moaned about mosques forever, and now they're not, not good enough, they want to pray out the road. I mean, I just run them over it, personally. I, it's just because it's so pathetic. And, you know, they really don't know what they're doing. You know, look at China. They've, they've destroyed 150,000 mosques already. They've millions of Muslims in camps being sterilized. They've classed Islam as a mental illness. The Chinese system is what's going to be put everywhere. So they're, trying to, they're setting up the Muslims to do stuff so ridiculous, you will get wiped off the face of the earth. Because the moment you start trying to enslave our white women, that's when you'll realise, actually, you're in a white onkies nation, and white onkies do one thing very well, and that's war. They're being set up, and they're being set up because they're not thinking properly. And actually, the, the guys born here are... The jab sorted out the older school who have settled here and understand the difference between where they came from and why they like to stay here. 
but they're importing all these fruit bats that France has ensured everybody from North Africa to excite the younger ones here who have never read the book, you've never read the Hadith, you've never read the Surah, and I know that those who are born here, if they were to read the Quran, the Hadith and the Surah, they would not class themselves as that kind of character. Because when your God tells you he will force you to rape, he will force you to enslave, that's only excitable to fruit bats. People that have been born here, that are real people, real men, wouldn't want to be that, would they? And I, like I said, I've read it. I've read it. I know what it is. I'm not here to cause problems between us. I want peace between us. But I can't force that. If these people here want to move it and keep moving it this way, then make no mistake about it. War is what you'll get. But then you're fucked. Then China, everybody, cause yeah, it's a mental illness, off you go. And you'll just be annihilated. You'll be wiped off the face of the earth. And that needs to be getting across to people, the Muslims that were born in the West, that at least have grown up with a sense of civility. They know the difference between here and over there. And they do. They do. They know exactly the difference. And they don't choose to go back over there. So why in the world are you encouraging what you don't like that you know is over there to take root here? Because it'll be the mindset of ISIS that take control of you. You know, the younger ones, the imams are only giving you little teeny bits of bits of stuff to keep you on board. Read it yourself. Read it, because you will not want to be that. Unless you're a fruit bat. Simple as. Anyway, where are we? Uh, prostate issues spring to mind with that end of the chakra. Now you mention it. Well, but keep in mind something about the prostate. As you get older, the prostate is the is what creates your testosterone, your estrogen, and so it's regulating that inside you. They've got all this food shit that's playing around with that. But as you get older, it expands every now and again. And it's normal, but they've got everybody shitting themselves. So at first sign of it squeezing your urine pipe and you're taking ages to piss, they think they've got a problem. It's a natural thing. But if you've got prostate problems, just go and get some soap palmetto. It's a seaweed. Don't get it from all the Barrett, they've put polymer in it. You can get it online that's uh, free of all chemistry. It's a seaweed, so palmetto, S-A-W-P-A-L-M-E-T-T-O, and it shrinks it in an instant, and it's a fire hose. So you go from, uh, to, you might break the toilet, so be careful. So palmetto, and I've got it, and I don't use it. I don't use it, because I don't want to overuse anything. Although I'm playing with this methylene blue at the moment, because to be quite honest, I'm absolutely zero negative effect. I can't sit there and give you short loads of positive effects, except it does, it does clear the mind, and you do have some funny coloured piss, so it's quite good for that, you know. So when you're, when you're targeting stuff in a urine, it's blue and green, so it's more exciting now of being a fireman, when you're going for a piss. Um, but no negative effects. Well, actually, there is a positive effect that I've known. My psoriasis. It's nearly gone. Now, I don't know whether that's giving up the old magic cabbage. Could be. Uh, in fact, I think it probably is, to be quite honest. Um, but that's been a real positive that I've noticed only now, let's say six weeks in, that I've noticed my psoriasis has really abated. Uh, it's not gone. Don't get me wrong, I'm not getting excited. But it, it, it's abated, so I don't know what it actually is, whether it's giving up that <laughs> Dr. Trev's concoctions or what, but I'm quite happy with the, the moves I've made since I was ill uh, seven weeks ago. I'm just happy with everything that's going on. It's just positive, positive, positive. And now I'm having a bit of colloidal silver in distilled water. Uh, which I have no idea whether that's having an effect or not, but I'll tell you what, I have a funny feeling if it's going to have an effect, it's going to deal with this shit that's going on in this gland you've got under here, hopefully, anyway. Otherwise, I'm going to start snorting it. 
I'm that fed up with this now. I'm going to have to do something. I've even thought about snorting meth blue. But I thought, well, I might be a bit excitable. I might just try snorting uh, this uh, colloidal silver water. So I'll keep you informed. Because I don't mind being a guinea pig, you know what I mean? Um, laughing my ass off, my sex energy has got up and left. Are you male or female? You're not talking to right males, Joe. Oh, rape right, females, are you? If you're not getting any sex like that. But fur dudes, I have to say, as you get older, it is a natural... But then I'm not I'm not doing it. You know, I'm, I'm keeping my energy. So I don't know whether that's just a natural side of that. And then if I did start to play out, I'd get just as excited as I were when I was 20. I don't know. Do we have to feel like we have to be sexual all the time? I don't think so. I mean, I've said this before, but I've met some Catholic priests in my time that were celibates. Not celibates because they were they didn't really want to be, but were just doing it. I'm talking about people that were truly celibate, and the energy that they give off is just immense, and it's all good. So there is something in that chemical gospel about keeping your, your oil and, and, and allowing it to be anointed, and then rising up and pinging that pineal gland. Uh, definitely, without a doubt. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Is it just natural that you lose uh, your sexual gig if you're just not doing it? That might just be normal. Sweetness of that. I don't know. Mupit's laughing his tits off. Uh, Slipknot's got a smiley on. Jerry, so to make forgiveness for yourself, ask for and give it also else. You've got to forgive yourself always. I mean, back in the 90s when I was really pulling myself to pieces, before I met that dweller on the threshold, which were what you got last week. But you got a, an, an easy gig on it. It weren't easy for me, obviously. I was going through the shit. But there were certain people that I'd realised that I really did wrong. And I made good. You can't change what you did, but I made good. And, uh, yeah, all I can say is, two of them cried. They were that thankful that I'd done it, because obviously it had a massive effect on them. So it is worth not only forgiving, but then to forgive yourself, you make it right, make it good. You can't change it, but you can make it known to them that you've, you've seen the error of your ways and you really want to let them know that you apologise. And uh, it's good for them, it's good for you. But forgiving yourself always, you have to forgive yourself. You made a mistake, you can't change it, you might be able to make it right, make it good but forgive yourself because that's that's that bag of shit that I was telling you about when I started on the dream questing that came here and it just got bigger and bigger and it just this voice just said that's yours you need to get rid of it you've got to undo it and that was the beginning of the journey sort of thing so definitely uh, forgiveness outside but forgiveness inside for yourself is so important um yeah stability in one's electromagnetic system is what Sabrina Wallace is telling us He's under attack, very interested you. Yeah, too right it is. They're trying to wreck you off. And if you're in balance, it's getting in. Uh, you know, so some of these yogis that have got every single chakra burning out, that stuff won't touch you. It will not be like, it just, you did annihilate it. Annihilate it before it hit you. Um, uh, magnesium is good for the arthritis. Dude, that cloudy call is a complete cock. Make no mistake about it. Yeah, coming and playing all this concern about me, me son-in-law. Yeah, I'll be 500 quid now. We're like, you fucking toss bag. If he'd probably been sat next to me, I'd have smacked him on God for a cheek. Because he was pretending to be lovely. Like he cared a fuck, you know. Asshole. Uh, Lewis says, is that Egyptian image showing the firmament? Well, it's more of a spiritual symbol. Do you know what I'm saying? Um in the Egyptian old lore, but I I don't know really, but no, and we're, we're, we're not we're not physical here in what this, these last few live streams have not been about the physical, it's about the, the electromagnetic energy system that most people don't even ex recognise exists, the astral body, if you, if you will, so you're dealing with that symbolism, we're dealing with that knowledge, not physical, so I suppose if you wanted a physical representation of it, you could be saying, yeah, the firmament. But what we're discussing here is the astral, the electromagnetic body, that is so important <coughs> that you get balanced. 
if you want your physical body to be some kind of in an healthy state, you know. Um, Mark says, brilliant stuff, Sean. Good, Mark. I'm glad you're getting it, my friend. Uh, Slipknot agrees. Thank you, Sean, for tonight. And ends up on Clive. Yeah. Yeah. Not even just not nice. A, a twat. So if people are sending him money and he's treating folk, Anthony says, Sean, bringing great clarity and comprehension, one can take this knowledge and apply it to the self in the hope of becoming in of self-wisdom through the application of the journey. Thank you, top man. You're more than welcome, chaps. And it's just good to know that there's people out there that can actually understand what I'm saying and are getting it. Because you apply this stuff, guys. Believe you me, it works. It works. You don't need secret societies. All the knowledge you need, all the knowledge you want, if you seek it, it'll come. Because you've opened up. You've opened up doorways that are not open to the fruit bats. No matter how many times they pray, no matter how much money they give, it doesn't work. You're praying to the evil system, the, the cube system, and you're building the system of the evil eye to de ultimately destroy it. Um, so here we go. Uh, Slipknot says, it shuts down DHT. What does? DHT? What's DHT, mucker? Uh, where do you get the meth blue, Sean? Well, I can't really say because um, it, it's not somebody that wants to supply it, if you've got what I'm saying. But I believe you mix it yourself. So just hunt it down as to what ingredients you need to mix it and uh, go from there. I am lucky. I'm not having to do that. Somebody's actually doing that for me and I do know that I'm lucky in that respect. But... So I can't help you there, Mucker, apart from have a look at what ingredients it is, because you can actually make it. Um, Jerry Sonomix says, you can put the colloidal in a spray bottle, Sean, and breathe it in. I never thought of that. Yeah, but I'm, I need to get in here. Got some shit going on up there. And it's constantly coming down green. So there's a big battle going on under here. You know, there's a lot of white cells getting snotted and coming down as green. So, and I think it's a bad one. I think it's a bit of a badass. I think it's like so much crap got in there and it's going, ah, now I'll just attack you whenever I feel like it kind of shit. I mean, I've even thought of cutting it open and squirting shit in it, but that's probably not a good idea. Uh, I just have these kind of ideas because I am going to kill it. I am going to kill it, whatever it takes, even if I have to inject it. I've thought of getting it. I've asked people for a, if they can get all the needles, but they look at me like and think, is just my kid? <laughs> like, no, I just want to inject some uh, that. Turpentine in it, you know that uh, pine tree oil uh, solvent. And I'm thinking if I squirt some of that in it, I will kill it one way or another because it's doing my boxing. So maybe I'll try, and I think I'm going to try and snort that colloidal silver and see how that. I think doing meth blue might be a bit severe. It might do some bit of damage, but yeah. Mm. Mark says we're silver. It does the same, Sean. Yeah, uh, you're right. I mean, when I get myself on my feet, I intend to do a lot of things. Believe me. Uh, that's why they use silver so much. I have a silver fork and a silver spoon, but obviously I'm not cooking. I'm only in a room, so I'm eating out, so I don't have the capacity that you normally have to do all that stuff. But I have silver fork and a silver spoon. Uh, forgiveness to those who have crossed one, all they know grudges. Exactly. Just see them as they are. <laughs> pity them. Basically, pity them. Because they're still the self, they're still full of shit. Still, I mean, there's so many people. I mean, so many people said because they hate me, but I don't give a shit. You know what I mean? It doesn't, it doesn't fetter me at all. I'm not interested. Fuck off. Because you know, if I, once I see somebody for what they are, they get fucking short through from me. Fuck off. I'm not interested in your fucking shit and piss. Uh, and they don't like it. Well, I don't care that they don't like it. Do you? Your skin is biggest organ on your body. Yep, and it absorbs everything you put on it. It doesn't, Mark. This is another fallacy. Your skin's there to stop shit going in. That's what it's for. So when they want to be, oh, you're getting all this glory and I'm going to have a shower. No, you're fucking not. Your skin is there to stop shit going in. You know, that's what it is. Um, where are you? Yes, you've got to, you've got to. You, so the game is you massage it so it comes into your, and I have noticed sometimes, if I'm doing that, half an hour, and there's some coming to me, 
my snot channels. Uh, and I do a lot of spitting because of it, because I won't swallow it. That's punk, punk rock for you. Never swallow it, spit it out. So, I mean, to some people, I must probably look disgusting, because I am always <laughs> gauzing everywhere, but I don't care. I don't give a shit. Um, does the astral body exist in the ether? Well, you, your astral body is, is it's every frequency that, your, that these chakras operate on. It's like you could say a body. Electromagnetic. And, you know, this physical side is just the, the point that earths your soul to this realm. And you've got all these... But people are not aware on these other... They fix into the garden. That's the fall of man. The garden. Genesis 1, man, image of. No fucking rules and regulations. None. There you are, you're in the image of. Now, what are you image of? Well, let's look at what they created or everything. So they're, good, they're pretty good at what they do. So that's your inkling that actually they, they, they created, what they created was good. So if you're fucking around creating something bad, you are not in sync with Genesis 1 and you're not man. You're fruit bat. Yeah? Ooman. Gollum. Person. Whatever you want to call it, you're not man. You are not man. Human is a shade of man, remember. All these shit that they're building up is based on human. But person. Y yeah? Um, massage it and snort it. That's all sound to you. Massage it and snort it. Well, I do. I'm always at it, actually. But it, it's well bedded in. I see it's like a little bugger somewhere. It's some shit fuck. And it's like going, ah, I'm going to have you. A bit like with root canals. Very dangerous to have root canals because you can get some serious critters in there or viruses or not viruses, but serious bacteria in there that can have you when it wants. Um... I use H2O as a mouthwash and bicarb to brush my teeth. Yeah, I brush my teeth with, uh, with bicarb. I've been doing it now for about four years. And uh, I never have a sore mouth, ever. My mouth does not get sore, ever. Now, I, tops of my teeth are brown. And that's what you can see when sometimes you're looking. So I, I've ground off tops and bottoms of my tops. That's with 90s and the magic pills. Um, and that's, but my teeth actually are in good order. It's just that they've got big gaps in them. And I, that, that gap there is just huge. But I am looking to get the four up bottom, four up top sorted at some point. Um, but they're actually, my teeth are actually in pretty good order, apart from the fact that there's, they're not white on top. Um, could you try a nebulizer with the colloidal silver? I had one which was famously given to me, but I haven't given it to you see, I've tried to get all of them, but I can't get them. Nobody seems to have them. Yeah, you know, them squirty jobs. No chemists have them. Uh, they said to me, I know what you mean, but we don't have them. Um, but then there's, there's, there's quite a bit of stuff going around that's saying that the cause of a lot of the problems that people have is because they're using tap water with these things. So if your leaks are setting this off as something uh, and you're using tap water, it's probably not a good idea. Um, which is why I'm going to try it with this. It's colloidal silver stuff. HO2, hydrogen peroxide, food grade. Oh, hydrogen peroxide is... Oh, yeah. Uh, and HO2 on your skin. Hydrogen peroxide, food grade. Oh, I don't actually know what that is. <coughs> Slipknot says, try niacin with infrared light for your blockage. Oh, yeah, you told me that on Friday. Infrared light and niacin. Yeah, okay, I'll keep... Let me write that there, actually. Niacin. Okay. You did tell me that, the, an infrared. Right, I've got that down. Cheers, Trev. Um, uh, not that I need it at the moment, but I read that Cleopatra had herbology that cured boldness in men. You know anything about this? Uh, I don't actually know anything about that, to be fair. I have studied Cleopatra. Apparently she was an ugly bitch. But back then they trained them in in the sexual arts. So once you, once you banged her, you, you're not going to bang anybody else because this girl apparently was the bee's knees because she knew all the science, the sex science. But remember, she weren't Egyptian. They were Greeks. Alexander the Great, all these generals took over Egypt. And a big chunk of what people think of Egyptians are actually Greeks. 
And at the minute, you've got uh, a lot of stuff coming out where um, the, the Ethiopians are claiming that a lot of what were Egypt were, were blacks, but I'm not so sure that they were because there was definitely a distinction between Ethiopia and Egypt. Um, and then a lot of the white mummies that we know, uh, mummies that we know were ginger white guys. So I don't know. It's just so. I mean, you look at what's happening, and Twitter's gone ancient lately. People are falling out like hell, and there's so much garbage on there just to try and make blacks hate whites, make white hate black, make everybody hate Indians for some reason. These panjits, everybody. Has, it's just so much shit coming out to turn us all against each other. It's quite worrying. But what I do find worrying, and and it's sad because I know a lot of Muslims. And uh, most of the guys I know are fucking sound people. But there's a major play going on in the, in the city, especially in London, to make the Muslims look fucking stupid. You know, praying in the fucking road. And calling for fucking death. And when Sherry is in, we'll be knocking on your doors to see if you're Muslim, how Muslim you are. I mean, it's like, what? Are you serious? You know, Generation X is still here. And we're not all fucked. And I can tell you now, Generation X are a different fucking breed than baby boomers, and they're a different breed than any of these young fuckers that are around. You want to excite Generation X, and I'll tell you now, game fucking over. Because we don't give a fuck. And every game you can imagine, every combat situation you can imagine, we were doing them as kids. You know what I'm saying? We were digging fucking tunnels, we were climbing fucking mountains, climbing chimneys, everything. We, we just don't give a fuck. And feelings are not something that we have a lot of, to be honest, because we never got them off baby boomers because they were just too busy being fantastic and amazing and pissed if they weren't smacked out on LSD. So, you know, there's a lot of baby uh, Gen X still around, guys. You want to be fucking careful. Um, how far are you, Mark? Okay. Uh, I fit in all that bit. Mark's a fitter. Fitter, fit, well, like mechanics kind of thing. Jerry says dried nettle seed also, Sean, half a teaspoon, chew up. Well, help unclog the sinus, uric acid, urinary tract infection. So I, I don't have problems with my colons or injecting my intestines ever. Uh, and I've found that if I ever am blocked up, it's usually down to what I've eaten and I have some aloe vera herb little things that I bought, what, 10 years ago. And two of them, before I go to bed, and when I get up, I'll shit bricks. It empties. It empties you. And so aloe vera, I think, is a major gig to look at if you blocked up, you know. And a lot of people are. A lot of people are full of shit. As a pun. Um, thanks for that anyway, Jerry. So what with that dried nettle seed? Nettle seed? Seed? Do they make seeds? I know nettle tea is supposed to be absolutely superb for you. Same with dandelion. I love dandelion and burdock. Um, we, we have it on. But I don't do it all the time. I have spurges on it. Uh, and I haven't had any for quite maybe a year. So I'll probably at some point go and get some. That's good. Dandelion and burdock. Dandelion is really good for your, uh, your, your uh, digestive system. Um, Mark's lonely. Why are you lonely, lad? Well, that's the thing. It is a lonely path, this. It's a lonely path because you, 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 you're you growing, but everybody else around you is staying the same. And the only way they can see you is that you're damaged, you're broken. Because they can only see you in their little bubble. They can't see you. They, they, and, and a lot of the time, the more you try and explain it to them, the further back they go into their bubble. And that's the same even with your kids, and your, especially your family. You know, they can't see you. They only see you through their own eyes. And it's a sad game, but it is a lonely path. But I like my own company. I really don't give a fuck. I'm happy on my own. It don't bother me. Because I'm not bored. I'm always doing something. You know, I'll go on a long fucking walk for a day into forests and up rivers. And I'll get in rivers and fanny about and fuck about, you know, like you used to, climb a tree and shit. You know, I, I can go into nature and go back to being a kid again. And if I find a rope tree, oh, I'm right for an hour. Hey! 
I can go back to being a kid really easy when I'm in nature. It's just easy, you know. And feel so weird, you need to grow up. No, I don't fucking need to grow up, you know. I like to have that child still in me that I can enjoy myself. Because it, it invigorates you to remember fun for fun's sake, which is what we had a lot of when we were kids. I feel so sorry for kids today. They don't know what fun is. If it's not with some electronic or some drink or some fucking substance that they just stick up their nose. That's not how you have fun. You have fun getting out there and making it up as you go. Digging fucking holes for no reason. Building a fucking dam for no reason. Making rope swings and staying on it all day. I mean, we'd spend a summer sometimes on these rope swings that I used to put up. And sometimes there were 50 and 60 people there. It became a hub for everybody. Because we, me and my mate were only guys that would climb up these fucking trees and put these rope swings up. And uh, it was fun for everybody. And people sometimes had gathered there for the whole fucking summer. Amazing times we used to have. We, we, we really did. And kids today don't know how to do that. Um, so obviously, oil pulling and colloidal silver mouth rinse for gum issues, especially root canal problems. Listen, bicarbonate of soda, that's all you need for your gob. An electric toothbrush, get a bit, you don't need tons of it. It doesn't scratch your teeth, it doesn't fuck your teeth up. But it cleans your fucking mouth, you'll have nothing going on in your mouth. And remember, most problems you have in, in you start in your mouth. It's just so spotless. It, if I hadn't got stained teeth because of 90s, because the other teeth at size, they're white. And if I were to actually whiten them, they'd come up as white as these spastics that walk around looking like they've got uh, something wrong. It's too white, guys. Come on. You don't have to be Americans. Um, you can buy shower heads with Vitsy tabs. Ooh, I'll have to look into that as well. You see, when you've got now, you don't look for them. You don't, I don't want to go looking for what I can't get. So you lose track and you just, you're just in your little bubble. I'll get me coster in the morning. I crack on with what I'm doing, I have so much to eat, and then I have a cluster of an evening. And that is pretty much my outside world. Everything else is just focused to this, uh, pulling this together. Because it's, it's quite interesting, it takes a lot of graft to put this life together. And I've, I've missed a lot of stuff tonight, uh, which you didn't do, but I'll just do it next week, it doesn't matter. But they're now saying that going into the countryside creates uh, nationalistic ideas and it's negative it's like kiss my fucking ass i'd like to see you stop me walking wherever the fuck i want to walk i'll tell you that now i won't go in your personal space if you've got property on movies or something but kiss my fucking ass if you think you're going to stop me walking fuck off that's when i would have shotguns hidden all over at movies and i'd shoot the fuck out you'd be dead i don't know it's being facetious like but what i'm saying is there are fucking lines drawn, boys and girls out there. There's lines, you know what I'm saying? Um, and we go, Lewis says, Sean, how do you preserve your hearing with age, you being into music? You must be aware that we lose a lot of the high-end natural. Well, it's interesting you said that, because I was sat in a car with my two sons a, a, a month or so ago. In fact, no, it was last year, I think, just towards the end of the summer. And they're both going, oh, can you hear that? And I'm like, no. And you go, yeah, 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 you was somebody with a dog whistle. And them two could hear it, and they're going, fucking hell, that's a bit much. And I couldn't hear it. So you're absolutely right, we do lose. But my hearing is absolutely perfect. And to say that I've been a drummer for a long time, and I used to have fucking speakers in my lungs like that, so I could hear a band. My hearing is fucking great. So I don't think hearing problems is probably anything to do with that. It'll probably be something more to do with your habits, your, your lifestyle. So my earrings fine, my eyes a bit full, but only close up, you know, take them off, I can see past. I mean, I can see there now, but reading, it's blurred, I have to squint, much easier if I bang them on. Um, but yeah, um, but again, my eyes, again, I'd say it's lifestyle, because when I had that DMT, a couple of years ago, when Danny Mullen came up, uh, fucking hell, the first thing I said to him, as he's kicking in, I said, fucking hell, your eyes have got fuck all to do with your seeing, nothing. Everything went to super clarity. So, there's something else going on with, with your sight that goes, again, it's probably down to lifestyle, something you're doing that's not good for you. But my ears are absolutely bang on. Um, 
The only thing I'm missing with me writing my music is I have a subsystem. And I like to write my music and produce it so that the bigger the system you have, the better it sounds. And I'm, I can't do that with tunes I'm pissing about with at the moment, so I don't know what they're sounding like. Um, the one I'm going to put on at end sounds fuck it. The bigger your system, the better that sounds. That's all. I like to produce my stuff like that. So I'm just missing that because like, obviously I can't set that up here where I am. Can I? Um, where are we? Uh, was, yes, Sean, was doing that. Big kid Malarkey in the woods yesterday, great. It is, it just keeps you alive, you know you're alive. You you, you don't always have to be serious in this. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly what you mean, mate. It, it's good for your soul. It, it's good for your fucking soul. Holy cow says, yeah, my partner goes into shutdown mode. Don't compute. Well, he's got something wrong with his chakra system at the bottom. It's not working right. It's negative. It's, ne it's, not, it's just not working for him, you know what I mean? He needs to attack it from this perspective. As I've said, the most important thing I did as I was studying these concepts was first I was writing down what thoughts come in. Not all the time, just maybe a couple of hours or half an hour, a couple of times a week. And But then I shifted it to, well, what thought forms am I focusing to and pulling into the system? And that's where I saw the trick. That's where I, you can then attack that mentally. You know what I'm saying? You can actually do it yourself. You don't need a secret society, you don't need a priest, you don't need any fucking body else. You're doing it yourself. And that came from within me. And you know, you pick that up on any, any book. That's what I did. And I've operated like that since the 90s. But I've always operated in that way. I've always followed me in a calling. And when I didn't, that's when I always got myself into trouble. And still the same today. But it doesn't happen these days. I will follow my inner things. And people will say you're cold or you're this and it's... No, oh, no, no, no. It's just I've understood that emotion and it's garbage. I won't placate it. And I won't placate it. I won't placate garbage from anybody. You know what I'm saying? It's just not on. It's not the way I work. I have my own game. I have my own world. And that's exactly what I work to. Because, of course, <coughs> what I've learned, I want to teach. I want to give to people so it can help you. Yeah. It helps you. It doesn't help me. It doesn't make, make my world any better. But it, I know that when you when you, when you get balanced and you understand spiritual law, we are so sure. We are we are one. We're to, we're supposed to help each other. The strong are supposed to help the weak, not fuck them all over. Sure. But that's unfortunately it's the world we live in, chaps. The world we live in. It's getting a lot worse, and it's going to get a lot worse as well. Um. Where are we? Why are our instruments limited? Basic dental kit and scrape the staining off your teeth. Well, I've always used uh, uh, sewing needles to get in because it. When I used to drink tea, it, it gets brain in, in gaps, and you've got a lot of gaps. So I always used to have sessions every month or so, scrape it all off, and everybody go, "Oh, you have to do that." And get, well, shut the fuck up. And I've done it forever, and I've never had plaque grow on my teeth or anything because I look after them. It was the 90s that screwed it up for me, we grinding my teeth after happy pills. When getting bicarbonate, and it just check ingredients, it has other ingredients, I yell, I mean, yeah, the ones, I get it from Lidl and it just has salt in it, that's it. E, it's just salt. Sodium, that's it. Um, but yeah, always check, always check the ingredients, like anything you have, anything. E551, you don't want it, silicon dioxide, you don't want it, that's polymer. And they're filling us up with polymer, it's something to do with these systems, so be keep aware. Um, Sean is all magic bad and does manifestation fall under this? No, his magic isn't bad. It's using, it's utilising your energies that are connecting with the higher energies and they're doing what you want. Remember, the angels, the battle at the beginning in all this gig was the fact that one bunch said, no, I'm not going to obey man. We're not going to do his will. Yeah, but work it out. Do you want a bad asses to be giving you what you want? The evil eye system? Or do you want to raise yourself the hard part? There's the easy way, the hard way. Cheat sheet, the way that I took, to spiritually evolve so that you are in tune. I mean, back in the day, I used to say all the time, do not let me go further than I've achieved. Because I want to manifest good in this world before I have my time's done. Yeah? 
That's what I want. I don't want to be fucking manifesting garbage. I did enough of that as a kid. But we ain't knowing it, you know what I mean? You're just a kid. Oh, you're doing what you're fucking doing. But I was always a potent, powerful character anyway. And sometimes I weren't always doing the best. It would, but then you're going through all that. Me, me, me shit, then, aren't you there? But as soon as you start to grow, you don't want to be doing that stuff. You want to be helping for. Uh, did you have a good day today? Ooh, ooh, oh, it's what you lick. Okay. Uh, that's why I made to uh, not get lonely. No, I don't get fucking lonely, don't fall. Uh, the disco grinding. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of that. All through 90s. And I wouldn't have changed it for the world. I enjoyed every bit of it. Right, chaps and chapesses, thanks for joining. And that's, oh my God, two and a half hours. So, But we've had a good team wag. I'll say thanks for joining. I hope you've got some of it again. I hope that completes the data that you're going to need in order if you want to move to balance those chakras so you can move out the garden. And next week, we're going to approach and look at this eye business because that's what it's all about, folks. The eye is the manifesto. And what you're manifesting is based on your character, your, your energy. What are you pulling through and manifesting in this world? So with that, ladies and gentlemen, I will say thanks for joining. Have a good week. Till the next time.
Electronica. 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 Electronica.